GoldenEye 007 is a first-person stealth action shooter game that was released on August 25, 1997 for the Nintendo 64. It was developed by Rare and is based on the 1995 James Bond movie GoldenEye. GoldenEye is considered a revolutionary game as it introduced and popularized several mechanics and features that are now common among the first-person shooter genre. These include stealth gameplay, which has the ability to sneak up on enemies, body-specific hits, meaning that headshots would result in instant death, whereas hitting other body parts would result in injury, three-dimensional space, meaning characters can move in any direction, and multiplayer mode, which is a split-screen feature that allows up to four people to play with or compete against one another. The single player mode, like the movie, has the player take the role of British Secret Intelligence Service agent James Bond, who is the protagonist of the game as he tries to prevent the antagonists, a criminal syndicate group, from using a satellite weapon against London. The type of conflict illustrated by the game is external person versus person conflict as Bond and his colleagues fight against the terrorist group. This is an old game, so there's no speech included in the game. Instead, there is text whenever the characters are talking, which is used to add narrative to the game. There are three difficulties to choose from. The higher difficulties have more challenging AI, they incorporate more objectives, and give players less health and body armor. As the genre of the game is stealth action first person shooter, players see the game through the eyes of James Bond. The platform of this game is the Nintendo 64, so there are some limitations, such as there only being one joystick. Players can't move and take aim at the same time. The player either has to shoot while moving or stop and take aim. In regards to action, stealth is a big aspect of the game, as defined by its genre. Although this isn't a game where players have to stay out of sight the entire time, the more stealthy a player is, the easier it will be, as players will be noticed less and thus shot at less. Using silenced weapons will help prevent drawing guards' attention as well and will make it easier to get through the level. Some levels are more dynamic in action than others. They are fast paced and sometimes have a timer going on so players have to be as quick as possible. Other levels have alarms and cameras that players must worry about, making players have to disable them before the guards get to them. GoldenEye was one of the first video games to have this complexity. Many games before it were mainly about shooting one's way through the level. GoldenEye, on the other hand, was one of the first of its kind to have players utilize cover, stealth, and really strategize on how to make it through a level. This is why it's an exemplary model of its genre as a stealth action first person shooter. Game objects include James Bond, the character that the player controls, his dynamic attribute is his varying health. Another object is body armor, which can be picked up throughout the levels to give players more health. Other important objects include the weapons that players use in the game. These range from the silenced PPK, assault rifles, sniper rifles, grenade and rocket launchers, grenades, and even a laser gun. Other objects include the many gadgets players have in their possession, such as the camera, data thief, and bomb disarmor, to name a few. One of the most important gadgets is the watch. This serves as the main pause menu where players can check their objectives, inventory, and choose to exit the game. It also has other purposes, like having laser and serving as mine detonator. Therefore, its dynamic attribute would be the mode that is displayed and used. The game also contains resources. Resources are objects that can be collected in-game to enable certain actions. Resources are available in GoldenEye as ammunition, weapons, and body armor. The in-game resources can be collected from different areas around the map, and a player can also collect resources from a killed character. Resources are not renewable, meaning that after a player collects the resource, it will not appear at the same location again. The exception is multiplayer mode, where ammo will always respawn in the same places. Resources may also be stored in the game, meaning that players may collect a resource and use it at another time in the game. 
players can collect many different guns and have them stocked up. There's not much player agency in the game, other than some of the objectives can be completed in any order, and some levels, such as the Bunker 2 for example, have a non-linear feel to them. This is understandable as this is a much older game, but the non-linear methods it did provide was a pretty big deal at the time. The graphics, although outdated now, were also good for the time, and the music really set the spy atmosphere with James Bond inspired soundtracks. GoldenEye would be appealing to both casual and hardcore gamers. The game is flexible in regards to the time and skill required to play the game, as there are three different difficulties for the game. What is appealing for casual gamers is that the game can be played in single missions and there is no requirement to save the game. The easiest difficulty would likely be appealing to casual gamers, as this level can be played with few skills. The multiplayer mode is also something players can just jump into and play with friends casually without having any investment into the main story mode. What is appealing for hardcore gamers is that the game can be played in long bouts of time if desired. Players can complete multiple missions, working their way towards completing the game. The hardest difficulty would likely be appealing for hardcore gamers as this would require the most skill to complete the missions. The game would also be appealing to achievers. Achievers enjoy achieving concrete measurements of succeeding in a game. In the case of GoldenEye, achievers would enjoy completing missions, gaining points, and acquiring guns and ammunition throughout missions. They would also enjoy beating the game on the highest difficulty, which unlocks the two bonus missions, Aztec and Egyptian. It would also likely be appealing to killers in the multiplayer mode, as this would allow players to compete against and kill one another. GoldenEye was developed, published, and released using a traditional game distribution model. This means that the game went from developer, to the publishers, which in this case were Rare and Nintendo, and then to the retailer and finally to the gamer. The business model for GoldenEye was game sales, in which gamers paid an initial cost for the game. GoldenEye was advertised using trailers that focused on the game mechanics and the in-game graphical capacity while incorporating the game's relation to the James Bond GoldenEye film. GoldenEye was first proposed to be an on-rail shooter game, However, after seeing Super Mario 64, the development team believed that on-rail shooter games would soon be obsolete and therefore decided that GoldenEye should be a modernized first-person shooter game. The development team consisted of nine developers, eight of which had no experience developing a video game before. The team has since claimed that their lack of experience helped them create such an innovative game because they weren't aware of how difficult some aspects would be in creating a video game, leading the team to add everything they thought would make for a good video game. GoldenEye was significantly past its deadline, in which its release date wasn't until two years after the premiere of the GoldenEye movie. This, in combination with the idea that video games based on films typically aren't good, and the fact that the developers were inexperienced, led the publishers and developers project that the game would not be very successful. However, because GoldenEye included such innovative features, over 8 million copies of the game were sold making GoldenEye the third best-selling Nintendo 64 game.